Watchdog Health Check, live from Television Centre. On the programme tonight... Seven-year-old Jonathan Hampton, struck down by meningitis, how Health Check saved his life. Larium, the anti-malaria drug, top doctor breaks ranks to say don't take it for two-week holidays. And the miracle cure for stammering from the world of opera, did it work? Watchdog Health Check, the programme your GP cannot afford to miss. The anti-malaria drug. After 18 months of campaigning for recognition of its side effects, Health Check has a result. Angela Rippon reports. At the American College in London, a very British gathering. People from across the country who say their lives have been ruined by the anti-malarial drug Larium. I was a perfectly, perfectly healthy, fit young woman of 26. I was hospitalised after taking Larium. My husband collapsed on the plane and was taken seriously ill and had to have medical treatment. Most of the audience put their side effects down to Larium, but as things stand, those side effects are not classed as serious. 19-year-old Caris Pugh contends her condition is serious. Travelling from Wales for the meeting, she'd taken Larium for a short trip to Kenya in 1995, and she says her personality changed from an outgoing high achiever at school to a depressive blighted by panic attacks. I enjoyed life, I really did. I had loads of friends, I played hockey, I was a prefect. It was great, it really was. And all of a sudden I didn't want to do anything. I didn't want to get, just didn't want to get out of bed. Um, I couldn't get out of bed. On our last film about Larium, one interviewee seemed to reflect her own personal experience. It was a BBC cameraman. He was describing how he'd gone from being a, a, somebody who could do anything. You know, he was going abroad, he was in um, wars. After taking Larium at pretty much the same time as I did, he was, uh, he was having panic attacks, he couldn't cope with anything at all. You don't really want to admit that Caris Pugh met up with that BBC cameraman, Julius Peacock. Together with the other 250 people in the audience, they were interested to hear from an Israeli specialist who believes that Larium side effects have been underreported. Among the uh, 2,500 people that we surveyed, uh, there was a response of 1,340, and 11% of those had uh, neuropsychiatric side effects to Larium. It appears from these findings that uh, the rate of neuropsychiatric side effects is uh, higher than what we perceived. Are you absolutely convinced that the sort of neurological side effects that you're seeing can be attributed to larium and nothing else? Uh, yes, yes. In, in many cases, uh, it can be attributed solely to larium, yeah. Alongside Dr. Potasman, an MP who believes that the risks of larium need to be reassessed. Jean Corston told the meeting that the official definition of serious side effects is people hospitalized after taking the drug. If you were told, look, there's this drug, but there's only one in 10,000 chance of you having uh, a serious side effect, even if one in 10,000 was correct, and I don't believe that it is, then you would probably be very surprised to be told that's what the definition of a serious side effect was, because I know people who have uh, had to live with the most acute psychosis for two, three, four years. I've reviewed, so far as I am able, all the research, and I am concerned, I'm now convinced there is a huge public health issue here which government will have to address. Yet, despite concerns about larium, the deadly threat of malaria is real. In 47 countries, it's the best protection for travellers against the disease. Two and a half thousand Britons caught malaria last year, and ten died. Whatever its faults, and I'll come to those in a moment, Larium certainly, of all the available drugs, is the most effective in preventing malaria. It's not infallible by any means, but it simply is better at doing so than the alternatives. Dr. Christopher Ellis, consultant physician in tropical medicine, specialist in infectious diseases for 16 years, and member of the Malaria Advisory Committee, which for the last 15 months has been struggling to reach a consensus on larium. But then, Dr. Ellis took the meeting by surprise. My personal belief is that we should limit 
the use of Larium to patients who are traveling to high-risk areas, who are going for periods of longer than two weeks. In other words, what you're saying is that anyone who's going off on holiday and goes along to their doctor should not be given Larium if they are just going on a two-week holiday. They should be given something else. But if someone is going to go there to work for yes. a month, two months, six months or whatever, then the long-term benefits of Larium outweigh the risks. That's right. I think the only exception to that, you've summed it up very nicely, is if someone, and there are such people, has taken Larium before without any adverse effects and they want to go back on it, Dr. Ellis said he believed that the public had now waited long enough for the Malaria Advisory Committee to issue new advice on Larium. I, if you like, am already to a degree breaking ranks. I'm quite happy to say it now, that that's where I believe we should be going. Judging from the number of people who came to this special health check meeting and from the stories they had to tell, thousands of people have suffered side effects after taking Larium. The problem is malaria is a killer and people do need to be protected. But there are contentious issues surrounding Larium and for people like Karis Pugh, those issues can't be resolved soon enough. I genuinely don't know what should be done about Larium because it saves people's lives but at the same time it's taken two years of my life now and I don't know when I'm going to get better or if I will get better. In a statement, Roche Products told us that they'd always acknowledged that Larium could cause side effects. Roche didn't question the sincerity of those at our meeting, but it did not accept that their side effects were necessarily down to Larium. Alice.